Hello, good evening, and welcome to WMT Reviews 12 Nights of Halloween. I am Wise Man Tanofsky. Now, I think it's generally agreed that the scariest kind of horror villains are not the monsters, the ghosts, or the aliens, as these things can be easily rationalised as being creations of fiction, which, while we can all still watch, enjoy, and get a thrill out of, it does detract ever so slightly from the fear factor. Note the scariest kinds of horror villains are the people, the Hannibal Lecters, the Norman Bateses, the Patrick Batemans, the dark side of the human mind that drives a man to kill another. We fear this not only because it can happen, but because it does happen all the time. You hear it on the news almost every other day. A human being of supposedly sound and rational mind has taken the life of another human being. They had their reasons and they took action and it chills the mind to the core. The real fear is in these monsters and history has provided no shortage of real life monsters to haunt the world. But what could drive someone to kill? What motive or emotion could possibly drive a man to take the life of another? It could be love, perhaps revenge, hatred or even madness. One film that seeks to answer this question is a quiet little psychological thriller from New Zealand entitled The Ugly. Focusing around the therapy of convicted serial killer Simon Cartwright, the film travels deep into his mind to try and discover what drove him to murder a series of girls with no motive, no pattern and no link, defying all reasonable logic. But as his doctor draws closer to the answer, the answer may very well come hunting for her. Watch out for the quiet ones, this is the ugly. So what's the story? In a rundown mental institute in New Zealand, confessed serial killer Simon Cartwright, played by Paolo Rotondo, is appealing for a re-evaluation of his mental state. Dr. Karen Schumacher, played by Rebecca Hobbs, is brought in to interview him, while also trying to understand his random and violent killing sprees. However, as their sessions progress, the deranged killer creeps inside her head, haunting her waking hours until finally he reveals his secret. Simon is not only haunted by those he has killed, but goaded on to kill again. And the more he kills, the harder it is to refuse them. Simon attacks Karen, attempting to kill her, but is stopped, driving Schumacher off the case. But by the end of the film, Cartwright escapes, killing again, tracking Karen down, and killing her. To the everyday viewer, this film might seem like a pretty by-the-numbers, low-budget psychological thriller with a small cast, one or two sets, and minimal effects. But the main themes of the film are not in how it tells its story of a psychopath being interviewed, but of the mental pressures these sessions have on Karen. This is done largely through the acting out of Simon's thoughts and memories on the screen. They could be talking about anything, and the camera will pan around to show us what happened. This act of visual storytelling really helps the viewer get inside Simon's head and is a far more effective method of portraying these psych sessions than just the two sitting in a room talking. It also lets the viewers feel Simon begin to open up as he begins to trust and become more comfortable with speaking to Schumacher, the memories grow more vivid and detailed. And of course, there's the chilling apex of their sessions, when Karen is finally exposed to the horrors inside Simon's mind before joining their ghastly number. A perfect example of visual storytelling applied to the genre of psychological horror. So, let's take a look at the cast. Everyone gives an amazing performance for such a low-budget piece, but the best in the film definitely is Rebecca Hobbs as Karen Schumacher. She doesn't feel like an actress at all in this. She's so professional that it feels like they picked her out of her day job as a psychiatrist and gave her the script. Over the course of the film, she obviously becomes very attached to Simon, and this shows through her performance. She also does an amazing job portraying the personal conflict, knowing she's just days away from a breakthrough, but not knowing how much more mental strain she can take. Hobbs plays the deeply troubled psychiatrist so well, from the moment she walks into the loony bin to the moment she meets her fate. A really brilliant performance. The other roles are all quite simple. Paul Glover and Chris Graham as the abusive orderlies Philip and Rob are fun to watch and create the characters that you want to see brutally cut down. I also particularly enjoyed Jennifer Ward Leland as Simon's controlling mother, Evelyn Cartwright. 
and Vanessa Burns as Cartwright's one true friend Julie. Even in the minor roles, great performances all around. But of course, the film is held up mostly by the incredible performance of Paolo Rotondo as the tormented serial killer himself. He has such a calm and subtle demeanour, you'd find it so hard to imagine this guy killing someone right until he snaps. Then you can see it. Rotondo's entire body language shifts as he unleashes the ugly within him and reveals this dark and murderous side. And it's such a change from his usual screen presence that it throws the audience completely off guard. Yet again, we're presented with another tragically sympathetic villain in this film. Simon is so tortured and tormented by the souls of those he's killed that he's driven by an insatiable need to take more lives, if only to lift the strain from himself. And this is all captured amazingly in Paolo's performance. He creates this haunted psychopath with such precision that you believe every word he says, a massively underrated thriller villain. And really the same can be said for the film itself. Being a fairly low-key movie, it slips under the radar of a lot of moviegoers, and this is a massive shame. Were it not for the film's antagonist being featured on the Boogeymen Killer compilation in 2001, it may not even have the slight following it has today. The Ugly is a brilliant dive into the tortured mind of a serial killer and seeks to answer the age-old question of what could drive a man to kill. Doing so through a fantastic cast of characters, very clever direction and incredibly emotional performance from its two leads. And for that I would award the film a very good 7.5 on the Orsometer. You probably haven't seen it, you may never have even heard of it, but this year I would urge you to look it up and give it a go. It is a great visually told story and you will not regret watching it for a moment. So that is a 7.5 on the Orsometer for The Ugly. I've been Wise Man Tanofsky. This has been WMT Reviews, 12 Nights of Halloween. Thank you very much for listening.